Hey everybody, welcome back to this Django REST framework tutorial series where we are building a REST API using the Django REST framework. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at authentication and permissions. So here is the Django REST documentation for authentication, and here it is for permissions. And over the course of this video, we're going to look at how we can implement both of these things into our site. So right now, our API doesn't have any restrictions for who can edit and delete the blog posts. So in this video, we're going to add some advanced behavior so that blog posts are always associated with a creator. Only authenticated users can create a post. Only the creator of a blog post can update or delete it. And if you're unauthenticated, all you can do is have read-only access. This is the GitHub repository with all the code in this tutorial. So you can go to the link in the description to clone or just use this repo for reference. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we want to go into our models.py file. And in the post model, we're going to add a owner variable. So we're gonna say owner is equal to models.foreign key. We're gonna say auth.user. We're going to say related name is equal to posts and on delete, we simply want to delete all references with this user. So we'll say models.cascade. So once we have this, we can make our migrations and migrate our database. So inside a terminal, Make sure you are at the manage.py level. And normally you would create a database migration, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we're simply going to remove our database and create another one to avoid any problems. So we're going to say rm-f db.sqlite3. So let's remove that. And then also remove any migrations we have from the posts slash migrations. Perfect. Now we can make our migrations with python manage.py make migrations. And we'll say posts. We can make migrations to the posts app. There we go. And let's migrate. So we'll say python manage.py migrate. And now we're at the point where we can create users for our API. So we can test this. So we're going to use the create super user command to do this. So to do that, we're going to say python manage.py create super user, all one word. And then this will take us through a little setup of a user. So I'm going to use that for my username. Put my email in and you can create a password. There we go. And it was created successfully. So now that we have a user, we need to make endpoints for our user models. So in this serializers.py, we first need to import our user. So we'll say from Django.contrib dot auth dot models import user and then we're going to make a class for our user serializer just like we did here for the post serializer so i'm going to make that right above here and i'm going to say class user serializer it's going to be the same thing here serializers dot model serializer and inside of here we are going to say posts equals serializers dot primary key related field. And we're going to say many equals true because a user can have many posts. We're going to say query set equal post dot objects dot all. And then down below here, we're going to have our meta class. 
So we'll say class meta. And here we're just going to say model is equal to the user. And we're going to pass in oops, user. And then we're going to pass in the fields. So we're going to say fields equals. And then this will be a list of different fields. So we have ID, we have username, and we have the post that it is associated with. So next we need to add some views. So in the views.py file, again, we need to import the user. So let's copy this, paste it here. And right above here, I'm going to say class user list generics dot list API view. There we go. And inside here, we're going to say query set is equal to user dot objects dot all. So grab all users and serialize that. So serializer underscore class equal to user serializer. And we need to import this user serializer that we made back here. So we can say from posts dot serializers import user serializer. And then we also need a class for the user detail. Again, this will be generics dot retrieve API view. And inside of here, we are also going to get a query set of all of the users. And we are going to do the same thing here. Okay, perfect. So that's it for the views. Now let's move to the URLs. So this will be in our posts.urls. So here we want to add the following two patterns. We're going to say path. Make sure to have a comma there. So we're going to say path users slash. And this will be associated with the view of user list. So views dot user list dot as view. And then just like we did here for posts, we also want the detail view of the users. So we're going to say users int pk views dot user detail dot as view, and that corresponds with this view here. So now we have to associate each blog post with a user. So as we have it right now, if we were to create a blog post, there is no way of associating the user that actually created that with the blog post instance. So the way we're going to do this is overriding a perform create method on our post views, which will allow us to modify how the instance save is managed. And we can also handle any other information that we need in the requested URL. So back in the views, on the post list, we want to add the following method. We're going to say def perform underscore create pass in self and serializer. And then we will say serializer dot save. And here we can pass in the owner and say that's equal to self dot request dot user. Now this create method of our serializer will now be passed an additional owner field as along with all of the validated data for the post. Next we need to update the serializer to handle this as well. So down here, we are going to say right under posts, we'll say owner is equal to serializers dot read only field. 
and the source for that will be owner dot username. And additionally, we need to now add this owner to the meta fields as well. So next we need to add the permissions to the views. So now that all the all the blog posts are associated with users, we need to make sure that only authenticated users can create and update and delete the uh, posts. So there's a number of, of ways that we can do this. Uh, in this case, we want the is authenticated or read only. And this will give authenticated requests a read and write access, and it will give unauthenticated requests a read only access. So in the views model, so back in views.py, we need to import the permissions. So we'll say from REST framework, import permissions. And we're going to add the following property to both the post list and the post detail classes. So we're going to say permission underscore classes is equal to permissions dot is authenticated or read only. And we need this for the detail view as well. So now we can add a login capability to the API in our browser. So for this, we need to edit the URL.py file. So let's jump into the one which is in the top level directory. So we want the one not associated with the hosts folder, but the one in the main tutorial folder, this URLs.py. And then down here, at the end, we're going to say URL patterns plus equal, and we're going to say path API auth, and then include oops, rest framework dot URLs. So this will include all of the URLs included with the rest framework for us. So now if we open up a browser with this URL. So let's run this with python manage.py on a server. If we go to this in the browser, again, we get nothing. So we need to go to posts. Now up here, you'll see we have this login. And let me actually remove this just so we can see that if we don't have this, the login actually disappears. So that's why we need this, okay. So with the login, we can now click that. We can log in with the super user that we created earlier. So let me do that. Perfect, and now I'm in. So now you can see not only can we create a new post from the terminal sending a request, but we can also do it in here. So let's create another post just for fun here. Let's post, there we go. So we made a post request. And remember, we deleted the database, so that's why this is the first one. Let me do second post. We'll save this, keep that the same. There we go, ID2. And we can also get to, so if we go back here, we get all of the posts. So now let's go to the user's endpoint. So let's come up here and say slash users. And here we have a user list and see we have, just like we did for the posts, we have all the users. So ID, username, and then these are the post IDs that this user is associated to. So post one, two. And we can go back here and see ID one, two, and they are indeed associated to me. Okay, so this is great, but we still need to make sure that these blog posts are available and visible to anyone, but make sure that only the user can update and or delete the post. So let's go back to our code. And in our posts app folder right here, let's create a new file. 
we're going to call this permissions.py. Inside of here is where we are going to create a custom permission. So let's say from REST framework import permissions. And then we're going to make a class is owner or read only. And here we're going to pass in permissions dot base permission. And then here in this class, this will be our custom permission to only allow owners of an object to edit it. So we'll say def has object permissions, the object being the post object, pass in self, pass in request, we need the view, and we need the object. So if request.method in permissions dot safe methods return true. The safe methods are the get head or options request. So if that method that is requested is one of those three, that means it's in the safe methods. So return true, it's visible and you can access it. Else we want to say return object dot owner equals request dot user. So let's see if the user that's trying to access it is indeed the owner. Now we need to add that custom permission to our post instance endpoint, editing the permission classes property on the post detail view class. So in our views.py, let's go down to the post detail class. And here in the permission classes, we have permissions dot is authenticated or read only. We also want to say comma is owner or read only. And we also need to import this class here from the permissions.py. So we're going to come up here and say from, from posts.permissions import that class. And now this should be good. Okay, so now let's open a browser, let's run this server again. So if we go to the post list, right, we have one post here. And if we go into that post, you see we get a delete and a put to update the post. We only get this because we are logged in as the user that created this post. So if I copy this URL and open a new incognito window, post that here, you see, we still get the post, but we don't have the delete and the put options. And that's because we didn't create it, so we should not have the power to update or delete it. So now let's take a look at authenticating with the API. So we haven't set up any authentication classes, so all the defaults are currently applied. So if we try to create a post without authenticating ourselves, we'll get an error. So let's try to do that in the terminal. Let's say term uh, shell new window inside of here. Let's make a request. So we'll say HTTP post. So we're trying to make a new post. Let's grab the URL. So we'll copy that, paste it here. And then we're going to say Now, if we try to do that, we get this 403 forbidden. And you can see here, the detail it's giving us is authentication credentials were not provided. So we need to pass that in. So what I'm going to do is do the same thing, except at the beginning here, we're going to add a tag to authenticate ourselves. So we're going to say HTTP dash A. And then here, you're going to say username and password. So my username, and I'm going to say colon, and then my password. And that worked, but I'm just getting an error on the title. There we go. So now that we passed, now that I passed in my password, I am able to create 
that post. So as you can see in this video, we were able to successfully provide authentication and permissions to our API, as well as endpoints for both of those. So in the next part, we're going to look at how we can tie all of this together by creating an HTML endpoint for our posts. And we're going to improve uh, the overall feel of our API by using hyperlinks to link different relationships within our API. So in this browser view, we can easily get from one object to another. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe for more content like this.